In today's video, I will be taking a look at my updated 2024 presidential election prediction after Donald Trump was found guilty in the Manhattan hush money case, how that wildcard would impact this election. Without further ado, let's get right into today's video. So in a national polling aggregate, Trump maintains a 2% lead over Joe Biden. That was remarkably good considering Biden won the popular vote by 4.5%, but only really won the Electoral College by a combined 42,000 votes in the most critical states of Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia. And if you look at the fact since his Manhattan hush money case began in April 15th, his lead has actually increased marginally, signifying that this case, despite the fact that people knew that Trump may have been convicted, has actually marginally helped Trump in the general electorate. But let's get into today's prediction. Now we're going to go first with Joe Biden's safe states. We still have the generic safe states here. I don't think New York's going to go under 12. I don't think a state like New Jersey, which could be slightly more competitive, will go under 12. Again, we see the generic states here, right? Joe Biden won 80 electoral votes. Donald Trump, he will see his generic states. States that he won by more than 12% in 2020 in this map. So you will see that Trump will end up getting, I believe, 113. I also think that Trump will carry Alaska by a safe margin this time around. I think South Carolina will also be the safe Republican column. That gives Trump 125 to Joe Biden at 181. This is not surprising. Joe Biden and Donald Trump will win these respective states. Now going to Donald Trump's likely states because he is behind in the electoral vote count. And again, I'll be stuffing in the analysis, how does Trump's conviction impact his chances? In Iowa, I'm going to start that off in the state of Iowa. Iowa actually think that conviction might marginally help Donald Trump in his re-election campaign. The state is very rural. It's very... A lot of the voters there do believe in Trump's claims about a 2020 general election. And that they do believe, again, the witch hunt theory that is proposed by Donald Trump. So, uh, the fact that Trump was convicted might help tr Trump with the rural voters who may feel a bit, you know, they don't really want to turn out. They're not very energized that if a conviction does it did end up happening like it did this time around, they might actually be more supportive towards Donald Trump. They feel like Trump has been uh, targeted by an unfair justice system and that that makes them more likely to turn out for Donald Trump. And as a result, a conviction might help him in the state of Iowa, a very rural state. Democrats only carried six counties in the state. Barack Obama in 2008 carried like half, and in 2012 he carried about a third of the counties. This time around though, I do believe Trump will win the state of Iowa here by a safe margin. Going to the state of Ohio here, we see a similar story from the state of Iowa. Iowa voted for Obama by six in 2000 and uh, I believe in 2012, it voted for Trump by nine in 2016, and which is a pretty sim significant 15 point swing. In, uh, in the state of Ohio back in 2012, uh, Obama won, it, won the state by about three to four points. And in 2016, a similar trend of about 12 points in favor of Trump as he flipped the state by eight percentage points. This time around, Trump is also favored in the state. He won pretty much all the counties in the state except seven, which are, again, the two large cities, Cuyahoga and Cl uh, Franklin counties, and also some of the smaller counties across the state, which are still relatively decently populated, except Athens County. Trump is able to run it the table in the rural areas, and I think that a conviction could actually help him again in the state of Ohio with those rural white uh, working class voters who do believe that the uh, convictions against Trump were unfair. And as a result, I do believe that Trump will still win the state of Ohio here by a high likely margin, if not closer to a safe margin. The next state here is the state of Florida. Florida is an older state. In terms of the demographics, it's also a predominantly Hispanic state, and older voters that right now at least are more favorable for Donald, for uh, for Joe Biden compared to 2020. More younger voters are more favorable to Donald Trump. At least those two groups of voters have pre pretty much switched their sides, with both groups say that they're more reluctant to vote for the party they generally don't support. What we see is that Donald Trump here won the state by 3.3%, a historically good performance, especially in Miami-Dade County, where Joe Biden only won the county by 7, while Trump won this, lost the county to Hillary Clinton by 30 points, despite still being able to win the state. 
Florida as a state has heavily trended red. I'm not surprised to see that Trump will end up winning the state by 10. I realistically think, realistically think that a lot of the seniors probably will be more energetic to vote for Trump in a general election because Trump was convicted. They feel like it's unfair. But at the same time, some independent voters, voters who, you know, may be more reluctant towards a Trump agenda, if they see a conviction for Trump, they're going to be less likely to vote for him. And as a result here, what all things even out, I still think that the Trump campaign will win the state of Florida by about 7 points, sufficient for a 7 to 10 points, sufficient for a likely margin. Now going to the state of Texas. Texas has been a state that is trending blue, and I think a conviction here might help Joe Biden to shore up some of these more moderate slash conservative voters who are super reluctant to go for Trump. They feel like Trump is pretty destructive to the generic Republican brand. As a result, a conviction for Trump pretty much seals the deal for some of these voters. They might be more inclined to back Joe Biden. In the state of Texas here, if you just look at the trend map, you can see that Republicans did very well in this type of area, the Hispa this Hispanic Rio Grande Valley, but those areas are less populated. The most populated county here, Hidalgo County, voted for Biden by 17. It did experience a huge trend toward the Republicans, 23 points. But at the end of the day, they're not close to as populated as a county like Harris County, which may have only trended blue by one, but that does make a pretty substantial difference. Similarly, in Dallas County, with, uh, with a total electorate of about 920,000 voters, what we saw was that a 6% swing there is more significant than perhaps like a 55% swing in Star County, which is home to just 17,000 residents. Once all is said and counted, Trump will probably end up doing similarly as he did in 2024. I believe Democrats will continue, uh, 2020, I believe that Democrats will continue to lose support in the Rio Grande Valley with Hispanic voters. What we saw is that Henry Kular did very well with that group of voters those groups of voters back in 2022 and 2020, but I think that Joe Biden will not be able to do well with those type of voters. Trump could end up winning counties like Star County or even Jim Hogg County, right? These traditionally blue counties that could end up swinging for Donald Trump, while Biden could end up flipping, flipping a county like Collin County in a pretty good scenario. Anyways, I do believe that Trump will win this day of Texas. That brings Trump's total to 218 electoral votes to Joe Biden at 181. Next up, we go to Joe Biden's likely states here. I'm going to start off with the state of Colorado. In the state of Colorado here, Joe Biden won the state by 13.5%, which is a safe mar margin by my standards, which would give it pretty much to a very safe Democratic characterization because Biden did very well across the state. You can see all those blue arrows, especially around the Dar uh, Denver suburbs, Arapahoe County. We go to Jefferson County, we go to Adams County, the populated suburbs around Denver, hugely trending blue. Even Colorado Springs, El Paso County trended 12 points to Biden. What well, we see is that uh, the state of Colorado is by definition no longer a swing state, but because of the closer polling averages, I will give the state to a likely Democratic characterization rather than a safe one. I'm going to go now to the state of New Mexico, where the criminal conviction could help Donald Trump, realistically in my opinion. Now, why do I think that? Well, the state of New Mexico has a lot of Hispanic voters who historically, at least, you know, minority groups of voters, they are more, you know, people can argue that they are more targeted and discriminated against in the legal justice system. And many of them certainly think so. And when Trump portrays himself as a victim of such prosecution and persecution, you do see that more Hispanic voters feel more sympathetic towards Donald Trump, and Trump has been gaining among Hispanics anyways. Although Biden did do better in Bernardino and Santa Fe counties, which are the blue areas of the state, Trump did much better in the rural areas. I do believe that with this oil belt as well as the rural areas, Trump could improve, which means the state could be within about 7 to 8 points, but still nonetheless not def by definition a competitive state. We go to the state of Virginia where, again, a Trump conviction will end up hurting Donald Trump's chances. In fact, this state is borderline safe because of the conviction. One of the few states that will really you know, where Trump's margin will be hindered by that conviction because a lot of the voters here, Fairfax County, just around Fairfax County, there are two congressional districts, which means that about 15% of the state's population is in the state of Virginia. 
is in Fairfax County, Fairfax City, and as well as the Alexandria area. And this is very college-educated region. It's a region that's heavily toxic to Donald Trump. The fact that Trump got convicted, that's not going to resonate very well with these white college-educated voters. They're going to be less likely to vote for Trump. As a result here, Trump will lose the state of Virginia by a likely margin. And that pretty much sums it up quite well here, in my opinion. Now, we're going to go to the next states here, which uh, which will be the more competitive state. I'm going to start off with the state of Nevada. First off, let's go to the polling aggregate from the state of Nevada. Nevada looks pretty bad for Joe Biden as he trails by several points in the polling aggregate. I'm just going to pull, pull it up here. The state of Nevada here, 6.5% lead for Donald Trump over Joe Biden. That is a significant lead. That is pretty much outside the margin of error. You can see the overlapping area suggests it's within the margin of error. Right now, it's outside of it. So it's not a good thing for Don, uh, for Joe Biden at this moment in time. He's also struggling with uh, donors by almost a 2 to 1 margin. Although he was struggling in Nevada with donors anyways, it's still not a great sign because this is hard numbers. This is not like debatable numbers. These are hard actual numbers from the campaign and does show that Biden has some weakness from the state of Nevada. Right now, the fact there's a lot of Hispanics, Biden struggling with Hispanics, the state tr pretty much trended to the right a little bit, and the fact is Clark County, the largest county by far in the state by population, about two-thirds of the population of the state re uh, resides in Clark County. That county trended to, tr to Trump by 1.4%, despite the national environment being more, more than two points more friendly to Joe Biden. All those signs considered, I do believe that Trump will end up doing better in the state of Nevada and end up winning it because all the indications does suggest that. So I'm going to give it to Donald Trump here by a lean margin. Now going to Arizona, where story is a bit more different. Where we see in the state of Arizona is that Arizona voted to the right of the state of Nevada by about two points, but Biden is a little bit more competitive in the state of Arizona by most metrics. He's still down by five, not a great margin, but at least he's competitive in some of the more recent polling. And we see that he's still with kind of within the margin of error of some of these polls. And again, when we look at the fundraising numbers, it's a bit better for Biden in Arizona. I know this looks like a huge deficit, but when we go to the state of Arizona by uh, fundraising. You see for Biden, Biden has improved significantly in the Phoenix area. You see all these upward arrows suggesting there are more donors for Joe Biden. We see that around Tucson and Flagstaff, which is another Democratic area of the state. I'm just going to show you that. The reason it's so significant is because, again, about 60% of the state's population resides in Maricopa County. This is where Joe Biden won the state by 45,000 votes in Maricopa County. Two thirds of Almost two-thirds of the state's population, Joe Biden won the county, he won the state. And Biden's getting significantly more fund, uh, fundraising advantage from that county. He's also getting it from Tulsan, which is another huge population center, while Trump is drowning a little bit in those areas. So sure, he's doing better in the rural areas, but that's quite insignificant in terms of the sheer number of donors. It does suggest maybe Biden has a little bit more momentum, but it, at the end of the day, this is still a significant deficit for Joe Biden almost five point more than five points at at this moment in time a likely margin that's not going to go away the fact that a lot of moderate republicans would not vote for trump because he's convicted is not necessarily that that notion is correct but that they were not going to vote for trump anyways so the fact is i still believe trump will nearly win the state of arizona now going to the state of georgia here the state of georgia you still still see a huge number here for Donald Trump, his lead is significant in Georgia, a 6% lead, not good for a state that Joe Biden was again able to win. Trump has already flipped two states, he's already at 235, he's already quite close to winning back the White House. So the state of Georgia here, we see the polling, 6 point deficit for Biden, he has not led in a single poll since I don't even know when, in fact I don't think he has ever led in a poll in the 538 aggregate except one by Fox News, which features Biden and Haley, where Biden is only sitting at the mid-30s, right? So what we're seeing is that the polls certainly don't look good for Biden. Biden did see significant gains in Atlanta suburbs, but I mean the rural areas, they're more likely to turn out than the suburbs, which a lot of the black voters and just minority voters in general around Atlanta feel very frustrated with Joe Biden. They're more likely to choose an alternative. As a result, I do believe that Trump is probably favored in the state of Georgia. 
And if you look at polling uh, fundraising here, it again does not look too good for Biden. He's down by 10,000 in terms of small donors and that Biden has seen significant drops in the Atlanta region. To be fair, Trump has also. But I mean, that's still a big problem here for not all Trump. Trump has seen, uh, Biden has seen a drop, a drop, and Trump has seen a drop. The problem is that Biden gets his votes from the Atlanta area. Trump simply does not need that type of support. And as a result, I do believe that Biden will end up losing the state of Georgia. Because again, right, if Biden loses support from the, uh, Trump loses support from the Atlanta area, it's more negligible because he doesn't re require those type of votes. He requires it from the rural areas where he is gaining some donors, while Biden is just losing support in the suburban areas, which is a bad sign for Biden. I believe the state of Georgia right now in the lean blue column. Now in the state of North Carolina, which also looks quite good for the Republican Party here, but this is also a bit more interesting because the state is closer in terms of polling than the state. It actually widened, never mind, but it's still relatively competitive if you look at it by Georgia standards, right? And if you look at, uh, again, it's definitely outside the margin of error. I think that Joe Biden will lose the state of North Carolina, but the fact is the state is also trending blue like Georgia, except again, this election at least, Georgia will certainly trend red. What we're seeing is that in the state of, I'm going to just pull it up here, the state of North Carolina, Joe Biden has seen significant gains in uh, in fundraising, specifically around Asheville, which is, uh, uh, which is a Democratic stronghold in the state, not by that much Macomb County. But still, he's gaining support, right? He's gaining a little bit from Mecklenburg. He's gaining a lot from Wake, right? These hard numbers, they're un less likely a lie than some of the other numbers, right? Joe Biden's not really gaining in Charlotte, but Trump is losing quite a bit. And he's also losing quite a bit in around Raleigh. Not a good thing for Biden. And Biden also, not a good thing for Trump. And Biden's also gaining in Wilmington in the state of North Carolina. Still, though, this is a quite a big polling deficit. Trump's... Um, conviction will only help him in some of the uh, rural black areas of the state. For example, in Warren County, Halifax County, rate the rural black areas of the state. Traditionally blue, trending towards the Republican Party. Again, we see the rural areas around here also more populated in terms of black population. Also trending red because they feel better with Donald Trump. Because they feel that Trump is the disenfranchised one. The one that a lot of rural black voters actually feel are similar to them in terms of the fact that Trump is relatable for being prosecuted for crimes and that a lot of black voters they can feel they can feel sympathy and empathy towards that and as a result you can see that Trump is still going to gain ground in the rural areas he's going to lose some ground in areas like Wake County but when all things are being considered I do believe Trump will still win the state of North Carolina by a lean margin because he was able to win the state at the end of the day last time round and there's no way he's going to lose a state that he lost back in 2020 at least that's how the polls and just gen the general election indicators indicate right now Now we look at the electoral vote count Joe Biden's at 209 to Trump's 267 Trump, all Trump needs is one of the five states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, or North New Hampshire, while Joe Biden needs to sweep all those states and hold on to Maine to have any chance of actually winning the presidency outright. So let's go to the next state here, the state of Minnesota here. Now in Minnesota, Biden still maintains a lead in most of the polls, but again, the lead is tighter than what he wants it to be. Sure, Biden leads by 2.4%, but if you look at the actual numbers here in the state of Minnesota, you see that in 2020, Biden won the state by more than 7. So why is Biden losing support? Now if you look at some of the polls here, there were two that were sponsored by Donald Trump, which showed Trump ahead. That's not very surprising. Anyways, Biden is probably still going to win the state of Minnesota, but there's a huge problem for Biden, the uncommitted vote, especially in the blue areas of the state. Hennepin County, the crucial blue area of the state, right, produced a net 330,000 vote lead for Joe Biden over Donald Trump. That is single-handedly the single deciding factor in the state of Minnesota. How well are is Democrats able to turn out their voters in Hennepin County? And what we saw was that Democratic primary voters did turn out except for the uncommitted option and not Joe Biden. 26% or 21,000 voters chose uncommitted. When those voters are going to end up not backing Biden, which means either staying home or actually supporting Donald Trump or a third-party candidate, that hinders Biden's pro prospects of winning the state. 
Guess who's next door to Hennepin County? Another very blue stronghold, Ramsey County, produced 140,000 net votes for Joe Biden. Guess what? The uncommitted vote there was also to very high, 24%, 8,000. Democratic turnout was not very high, and when in the areas that had, had high Democratic turnout, a lot of those voters actually voted uncommitted. We go to Noka County here, a big suburb. Uncommitted got 20%, again, similarly in that county. And what we're seeing is that the uncommitted vote is very strong in these areas with younger voters, voters with, you know, white, young, college-educated voters who are still probably in college right now. And that's a big problem for Biden. He needs to consolidate the uncommitted vote. I think that Biden will ultimately do that, but I think the state will be closer. It will be a lean margin, especially considering Trump was convicted. The rural areas are more likely to consolidate behind him. Now, I do know some white college-educated voters or some minority college-educated voters. They're going to feel that, again, they don't want to, they don't want a candidate that has just been convicted of a crime. And that aspect will help Joe Biden. But I think that when it balances out, it really doesn't do much either way. It just boosts Democratic and Republican turnout at the end of the day. So the next state we're going to go here is not a state, but rather Nebraska's 2nd District. We have some polls here. Nebraska's 2nd League of American Workers, a Republican internal, had Trump up by 5. That is quite interesting by all standards. But at the same time, in another poll for Nebraska's 2nd, Dan Osborne, which is a independent aligned with the Democrats, had Trump ahead by 3 in both of its polls for Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District which is quite interesting. Now, I think that the reason that is the case is so that he can show that he is overperforming Joe Biden by a significant margin. I think that that is perhaps why the polls suggest that Trump is ahead. Anyways, I do believe Trump is going to win. Biden's going to win the state, the district overall. The reason being he won the district by seven. The district trended so much towards Joe Biden. It trended like Douglas County, where Omaha is pretty much the base of the second district, trended nine points for Biden. The nearby county, Sar Sarpy County, trended 10 points for Biden. When we see these significant trends in the very populated areas, in pretty much the base of the 2nd District, it does not look good right now for G for Donald Trump in that district, but that doesn't really matter. It's one electoral vote. I believe it's going to go for Joe Biden by lean margin because the district is indeed slightly redder. We go to state Wisconsin here. Wisconsin in the Democratic primary and Republican primary in the state of Wisconsin, we really can't read much into those numbers. Right in the Republican primary, Trump got 79%, Biden got 88.6%. It makes sense because Biden is the incumbent, right? Trump did bit, not that well in Dane County or Milwaukee County, but I mean, some Democrats probably crossed over to vote. Well, in Dade County and Milwaukee County, Biden, did, uh, Biden also underperformed with uninstructed getting substantial portions of the vote, especially in Dade County, a Democratic stronghold. In the state of Wisconsin, though, if you look at the donor numbers, Biden's numbers have skyrocketed. You can see he has gained in every county where there is a net donor change in the state of Wisconsin, while Trump has lost quite a bit, especially in Madison County and the Wild Counties. Nevertheless, here, the donor numbers, they don't itself say a lot, but the state is also very val valuing the, the abortion issue, which could play a role in the election itself. But again, all things being considered, just look at the polls. It still looks too dim for Joe Biden for me to th think that Biden will end up winning re-election in the state of Wisconsin. I still think that the 2.1% deficit, considering the historic um, lean for the polls to actually underestimate Trump, and this time Trump is actually ahead, although there are some signs that Biden may be making this race extremely close, I just don't think that Biden's going to win the state. As a result, I'm going to give it to Trump by a tilt margin, giving Trump the presidency with 277 electoral college votes. Now, main sec uh, Maine's at-large vote and 2nd District here. 2nd District, I'm just going to give it to Trump by a likely margin. While Maine's at-large vote, we're seeing some more competitive numbers this time around, where a lot of the polls suggest this race is actually very close. Do I buy them? Not necessarily. Do I think the race will be closer? I do think so. Main 2nd, Trump plus 20. Uh, uh, Right, Maine's at large, Trump plus six. Maine's at large, Biden plus one. Right, we see these more competitive numbers. We did see one Biden plus eleven, but that was more than a year ago. We see that the state of Maine, a state that has became much more rural, it, uh, which is a group that Trump does very well in. Right, Obama in 2012 lost just one county in the state. Trump won half the counties in the state of Maine. So we, we're seeing that the state is trending red, but that Portland is still holding the state to a blue state. 
I do believe that the state will be closer. I just think that Biden will win because of the historic lean for Democrats in the state of Maine. We go to the neighboring the state of New Hampshire, where the fundraising numbers are slightly telling, right? Trump has lost in the uh, more college-educated regions, while Biden has gained substantial numbers in some of the more college-educated areas like Concord, Nashua, Manchester, right? Those type of areas. White college-educated voters decide the state of New Hampshire, and those voters have been historically in the past decade or so been heavily trending blue because of the fact that, again, they, they're really Trump haters by many standards. I'm just going to go to the state of New Hampshire here. In many of those voters, they are indeed kind of like Trump haters, and they're voters who are going to vote back for Haley, but not back Trump. What we see outside the Republican primary is good proof of that. Nikki Haley got 43%. Sure, he, she got... A lot of that vote was from independents, but a lot of what, what the election will be decided upon by are those independents who decide to back Haley over Trump. And at the end of the day, I just think that Biden will still win this in New Hampshire here by right now what looks like to be a likely margin, in my opinion. Now going to the state of Michigan. Michigan's another state where polling does suggest that Trump has a lead, but it's another Rust Belt state where the margin is within the margin of error, sitting at 1.2%. Now this is really... You can argue a coin toss here, but I believe that the state will go f for one candidate over the other. We look at the Republican primary there, Trump achieved absolute domination despite the fact that some polls predicted an area like Oakland County would be more favorable for Nikki Haley. It was not. Well, the Democratic primary here did not look as good for Biden. Biden, there's still a high and committed vote, especially in the Democratic, Democratic strongholds, Wayne County, right? We go to Washtenaw County, which is Ann Arbor. These are areas that, again, we, we go to uh, Dearborn in Detroit, we go to the college towns in Washtenaw, where there's still a lot of student protests surrounding Biden's handling of the Israel-Hamas war right now, and that's a problem for Biden, right? These uncommitted voters, 100,000 of them voted uncommitted, uncommitted got two delegates of the state's 117. Those are all concerning and warning signs for President Biden because he's not going to be able to turn out those voters who are just voting uncommitted. Those Arab Americans who say they're not going to end up backing him because they, because they feel like they ha Trump, uh, Biden has betrayed them in some way or another. When you won, won the state by 150,000 votes, and then 100,000 of your voters are voting uncommitted, that is a big problem. Sure, the state has a heritage of having about 30,000 uncommitted votes, but more than 100,000 is certainly unprecedented. Therefore, I do believe the state will go to tr Trump by a narrow margin, though some of the suburbs like Oakland County or Kent County may still end up swaying a little bit more towards Joe Biden and end up giving Biden a narrow victory in the state of Michigan. Only time will tell. Finally, in Pennsylvania. To be honest, Biden did not do that well in Pennsylvania, right? Biden was supposed to do well because he was born in Scranton. But at the end of the day, the margins weren't the best. Biden sure got 87.9% and Biden's was not that high, right? Dean Phillips, they're perhaps just choosing an alternative. However, if you go to Scranton, Biden got 88%. That's not the best for your home county, right? That is pretty obvious. We go to the suburban areas around Philadelphia, sure, Trump did not get the best numbers, but I mean, he was never expected to get the best numbers in those type of counties. While Joe Biden, he really did not do as well from areas like Philadelphia, Ridens was 10%, that was like 16,000 voters, right? Those are still concerning signs for Joe Biden. It doesn't indicate he's going to lose, but it doesn't help his chances. Furthermore, the rural voters in the state of Pennsylvania, they're going to be, they're, they might, they might actually be more, you know, they may be more energetic to end up backing Donald Trump over Joe Biden because of the conviction. Because again, a lot of those rural voters, they're more energetic, the more trouble Trump ends up, you know, getting involved in. Well, again, some of those white college educated suburbanites around Philadelphia, the four counties around Philadelphia, that was what gave Joe Biden his win. Chester County, Delaware County, Montgomery County, Bucks County, right? Those are voters that could end up trending towards the Democratic Party, just like 2020. But those rural voters, if they turn out, even though the percentages may be similar, they might not trend Republican, the increased turnout will single-handedly give Trump the victory in the state of Pennsylvania, in my opinion, which gives Trump 
312 electoral college votes to Joe Biden at 226. A lot can change. There are four states that are in tilt. If Joe Biden is able to sway, sway the three Rust Belt states or win Michigan, Pennsylvania, Arizona, he can still win the election. But right now, it looks like a conviction might actually benefit Donald Trump. The reason being that a lot of these rural voters, white rural area voters, or even black voters, they feel like Trump has been targeted, especially African Americans who have a higher conviction rate for some of these crimes. They feel like that Trump is another victim and, they, and they're more empathetic towards Donald Trump and sympathetic as well. Well, we see some suburbanites from these areas, for example, in Michigan, I'm just going to take counties like Kent County, right, right where Grand Rapids is, or Oakland County, right outside of Detroit, right, those are type of voters we go to, like, the Wild Counties in Wisconsin, we go to four counties, Bucks County, Chester County, Montgomery County, and Delaware County, right, those are areas that are more sympathetic for Biden after Trump was convicted, they feel like Trump is not fit because of those criminal charges, when all is said and done, I don't think the conviction really matters either way, but I think that, if anything, it will marginally help Trump. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.